Today I'm going to be addressing the top 10 myths of how to set up and swing on a single plane. Uh, these are myths that I address in my golf schools regularly uh, from clients who have been attempting this concept for in some cases many years or those who have just uh, started or who have studied other similar methods. Um, they're told a lot of things uh, that in many cases aren't based on any science at all. They're just one person's idea of how you should be doing things. So I'm going to start with my top 10 and I'm going to go through it step by step. At the end I'm going to give you the simplest solution to setting up and swinging on a single plane and it's something I've had great success with through my website, my online learning program, uh, as well as through my schools taking place around the country. First do me a huge favor, click the black subscribe button below uh, to get notified as new videos are released and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. I also respond to all reasonable questions and comments below. So the first of the myths that I'd like to address is the stance width or wide stance. Uh, many because most stood very wide think that that's a great position or it's a better position and part of the reason they're doing that is because they want to limit the amount that you're able to turn in the golf swing. And the problem with that is very simple to understand that it's rotation of the body which is going to not only supply power but it's also going to help you deliver the club with the hands leading through impact which all great players have always done. That's going to help us be more accurate and produce more club head speed. Uh, so I advocate standing uh, in a more comfortable position for you and each of us is different so some of you have more flexibility and can still turn decently with a little bit wider stance uh, and some of you can't move very well if you get wide so you need to have a somewhat more narrow stance. So as long as you're able to maintain balance uh, that's the width that we would go with uh, and it should be comfortable. Uh, with the stance we like to turn the leading foot out a little bit so that we're able to turn through on that leading leg which I'll talk about here in a little bit. I'm also often asked about the distance we should stand from the ball. Uh, some would have you stand an exact distance regardless of your height. So if somebody's six foot six or five foot six, you're supposed to stand an exact distance of 20 some inches from the ball. Um, when in fact, obviously a taller person uh, being more over the ball, especially if their clubs are the same length, are going to need to stand somewhat closer to the ball. And I've found that fitting the distance from the ball is easy if we fit it to impact, not saying we're going to set up here and then we're going to learn to make impact a certain way, uh, compensating for that great distance from the ball. So if we stand set up closer to the ball, it also makes it easier to swing the club on the target line as opposed to farther away. It's very difficult to swing down the target line. So I will have you set up and make some swings back and forth and you'll see the distance from the ball that your club is consistently striking the ground. That would be your recommended distance from the ball today. Now if you work through my program as I teach on my website, um, here on my videos in YouTube and in my schools, um, you'll learn to deliver the club in a perfect impact position which is going to necessitate standing a little bit closer to the ball at impact versus uh, those releasing earlier uh, would need more distance from the ball. And the problem with earlier releasing is the club's in rotation and you're not going to be consistent. So we really need to focus on uh, finding our ideal distance from the ball for each of us as individuals um, and that's really, really critical. Uh, the next myth for a lot of people it's widely believed that we should hold the club a certain way exactly like Mo or exactly like Bryson. Uh, one of these individuals. Now the problem with that is that every golfer, regardless if they're swinging on a single plane or not, uh, every golfer holds the club differently. And there's a good reason for that because we all have different experiences in golf and we're all built a little bit differently. Uh, and if you want to find your natural position of how you should put your hands on the grip, we need to go to impact and and if you understand where you need to be at impact, and I talk about this in a lot of videos, uh, we need to have the hands leading at impact uh, like this. 
And if we put the hands on the club there, you're not very likely to put the hands on the club turned with the back of the hand that way. Uh, you're more likely to just put it on comfortably here and then put the trailing hand on comfortably there. But we need to fit that to your current impact position. I show you how in my learning program, uh, as opposed to putting it on with some markings on a grip, with the back of the hand to the target, in that case, if you're used to any bit stronger grip, any amount of stronger grip, uh, you're going to need years to learn how to deliver the club without the club face being open. And I've seen people take two or three years working on exactly matching the grip of Mo, and they've never become better than they were before. And so instead of wasting your time, customize your hand position to fit so that you can easily, when you make a motion through impact, that the club is automatically square. And that's what we're looking for. My goal in teaching is to give you the fastest improvement possible, and that's what I'm aiming to do, and that's what we will achieve through customizing your grip. Uh, the next myth, uh, palm grip, uh, we need to hold the club in the palm of the hands. Uh, this is something uh, that was taught years ago uh, through the natural golf system. And it's a bad idea simply uh, because the idea for people is they're putting it in the lifeline of the hands and it allows for very little leverage in the golf swing. And every time we put our hands on the golf club, we need both the palm of the hand as well as the fingers wrapped around the grip. Um, it's also grip size is important. I did a recent video on these Jumbo Max ultralight grips. I'll link to it here, um, but that's very important grip size, especially if you're trying to set up in your impact plane and then move the club on a single plane. So uh, getting the grips, uh, proper grips, and then learning that we need to have the heel pad of the leading hand on top supporting the grip like this so that we can use maximum leverage through the shot and have the wrist free to allow for a lot more speed in the swing but also to allow us to deliver the club square through impact. This is really critical. Uh, so don't think it's a palm grip. Uh, it's, it's in both the palm and the fingers. In fact, I feel it in the fingers more of the trailing hand my palm is more in connection here with the thumb of my leading hand. The next myth is that uh, when we're set up like this on our impact plane that we should naturally try to take the club to the inside going back or under the swing plane. In my experience, this is a huge mistake uh, simply because from what I see from teaching a lot and in my schools for people that have attempted this, Virtually every single one of them is here at the top and then they come down too much from the inside So they're swinging inside to out now a lot of people another myth a lot of people think it's good to swing inside to out But think of it this way our path is towards the target here if our club is swinging out To the right of that as a right-handed golfer the only way I'm going to get the ball to the target is to have the club face closed relative to that path. And I see people trying to even be here where the club would be pointed again to the right and somehow they're under the illusion that from there they're gonna get it on path and at the target. When the only way to do it from this position that's being uh, people are trying to learn, the only way to do it would be to release early. That would be the only way to get it back on path. If you don't do that, then from that inside path, you're forced to have a closed club face. Both result in horribly ineffective uh, shots and inconsistency. You might hit one out of three shots decently, but we all know we're not gonna have much success hitting one out of three. So we need to learn to take the club back and down and through on one single plane. And that should be obvious if you're calling it uh, setting up and swinging on a single plane. If that's your goal, to move the club on one single plane, it should be obvious that we're not going to go here and then hope, as Mo did, hope that we can pull it down on plane. Now, he did it because he was lead arm or left side dominant playing right-handed. So when he got there, he pulled that way. It almost looked a little bit over the top, 
but he pulled it right down the plane. I haven't seen anybody replicate that from going under as much as he did for being perfectly on the plane with his results. So some have come close on video, but I don't see anybody out there giving exhibitions where uh, all the pros show up just to watch him hit balls. The next myth is that it's advantageous to limit the length of our backswing, that we should really only take it uh, to here. Now, a lot of this comes from uh, those who were copying Mo, as I did many years ago. Uh, when I met Mo, he was 68 years old um, and uh, pretty heavy set and limited flexibility. And so he only took the club uh, to here. So that seems to be the basis for uh, people copying that motion and trying to limit themselves from going here. If your flexibility allows for more, uh, then you're leaving distance in the bag, but you're also interfering with your natural motion, which is also going to make consistency very difficult. You're always going to be thinking about having to stop at a certain place instead of taking it back to where it's comfortable and swinging from there. I wouldn't limit your backswing. I would go to the limit of your own flexibility. And again, each of us is different. It's important to understand. Just move the club what's natural for you. The next one's really important. Uh, the next myth is that we need to, uh, when we set up here on our impact plane, that in order to make good impact, that we need to keep the trailing heel attached to the ground through impact. This is probably the worst idea that I've heard in golf in that it's totally ridiculous because there's nothing that I would ever do athletically. If I was gonna throw something, I would never keep the heel on the ground. If I was gonna hit something with a bat, I would never do so. Uh, it naturally is always going to come up because we're using the ground to create power and to create this rotation. Keeping that on the ground is a recipe for losing speed losing distance, but it also makes it much more difficult to get the grip leading the club head through impact. Um, if you think about it, it's totally unnatural. The argument that's been used is simply that if I lift the heel, that somehow that's gonna make me top the ball. When in fact, you can see I can lift the heel, I can turn, and there's no lifting involved of the club head. So this has zero effect on the club head. You can see that. Uh, what it does help me do is to rotate my pelvis and upper, upper torso, which puts me in a more advantageous position to make pro-like impact. And regardless of your age, this works wonders in allowing the freedom to just let it come up. We're not, we don't need it to be like that. Uh, just allow it to move naturally. Like you're gonna throw a ball, you can see it comes up very early. So allow the freedom of natural movement and you will play better golf. And this is again part of my learning uh, program where I teach you uh, to learn perfect impact uh, through my simple easy to follow drills. Uh, the next along the same line is that we need to keep the leading knee bent through impact. This is also a very bad idea and it should be obvious. So by keeping the knee bent through impact, uh, and you're trying to rotate over that leg, I believe you're putting more stress on the knee. And I have many clients who have had knee problems uh, who, have, who were trying to do that. When we let it straighten through impact, not only are we assisting the hips and body in rota rotating towards the target, which creates more power, we're also helping us achieve a pro-like impact because it's critical coming into impact that we have the grip moving upward as we're releasing the golf club. Now this should be a natural process, not that we're thinking about, but if we're set up far from the ball and bending the knee, we're actually moving down towards the ground. So we're not able to then push and let the leg straighten, which creates power, but also creates this shallow flat spot through impact and allows us to keep the club face square. Uh, it's negating everything that's important for a natural motion that's gonna be powerful and accurate. So we really need to see uh, those two things together, keeping the heel down and the knee bent, are really, uh, from my experience, the worst thing that you could do in a golf swing. The next myth, and a lot of golf instruction is this way, 
uh, but they have you learning a bunch of different positions in the golf swing. And the problem with this should be obvious that when you learn to do anything, you typically have never learned positions. When you learn to throw a ball, I doubt that they put your, uh, the ball in your hand and then told you to move your arm to here and then step to there and then bend your wrist back to there, move to here, move the elbow to there, move the arm and shoulder and throw. Uh, what you did is you learned through moving and trying to get the ball to your target, you learned how to move properly. As soon as you start putting it into positions, we get here, we're interrupting natural movement and we get caught up and I see a lot of people getting caught up here in the swing. I've had people actually come to my schools and this is how they hit a golf ball. And it's, and it's just so many positions, there's no natural motion there. Um, so instead of working on positions, we need to learn how to move the club ideally through impact. I'm going to talk to you about that in a moment through my solution part of this video. Um, and it's really critical to understand that we really need to focus on making great impact. And that doesn't involve uh, learning a bunch of different positions. Now, in some cases, if you're so far off, uh, yeah, we might have to work on something. And that would not involve hitting golf balls, but it would involve taking the club back in a different direction and then uh, moving naturally, but learning the movement, not positions. So that's really critical to understand. And again, my video learning program takes you step by step through how to do that. The last myth I'm going to talk about before uh, we get into uh, the solution to all this uh, is that you need special golf clubs in order to swing a golf club on a single plane. Most people should understand uh, that that's a ridiculous idea because the ball doesn't know what swing you're using. The club only needs to be fit for how you're moving the club through impact. So whatever plane you're on at impact is going to determine partly what club you need as well as the timing and the speed of your golf swing. There's nobody that can tell you that online, including myself. Uh, measurements aren't going to do it. I know in the past Ping would measure your wrist to floor. Uh, they want to know how far you hit a seven iron uh, and various factors like that. Um, I'm not sure if they even do it that way anymore. Uh, but there's a lot of people online that will take you through a fitting process. Uh, there's absolutely no way to do that online. It's my belief that's totally impossible because of the process for fitting for an ideal set of golf clubs for you involves you actually hitting golf clubs to determine what works best. And the only way to do that, uh, in my opinion, is to go to Club Champion Golf. They have locations around the country in every major city. And what they do is they fit you first for the ideal shaft. Now they do this first having you hit your own six iron on a track man that measures every shot. And then they take a head off the shelf. They pop a shaft in there and they get the results with that shaft. And they keep trying a multitude of different shafts to see what shaft produces for you the best launch conditions, gives you the most accuracy and also the most distance. And once that shaft is found, then they find the club head that works best with that shaft. So they're not trying to sell you a certain brand. Like a lot of companies will only sell you TaylorMade or PXG uh, or Callaway. Uh, here you have the choice of all trying them on that shaft that fits perfectly for you. I could take this shaft and hit it good in any golf club. It just happened for me uh, that I hit it best. This is the Maverick Pro. Before that, I had the Callaway Apex. Uh, and before that, I had Mizuno. Uh, and so this shaft worked well in all of them. But the key is the shaft. And that's the problem with an online fitting. You don't get to try 20 or 30 shafts. Uh, you have one or two choices, stiff, regular, a little bit lighter, a little bit heavier. Uh, but without trying them. And so get the best for your money. If you go to Club Champion Golf, uh, use my name as your referral. Uh, and they'll treat you right. They also understand uh, the swing method that I teach of setting up and swinging on a single plane. So they're not going to try to reinvent your golf swing. The idea of fitting is to fit your existing golf swing. And so 
once they figure out the club head that works best, then they'll talk about grips. I highly recommend the Jumbo Max Ultralight Grips. Again, there's a recent video on my channel. You can look at that or on my website on the FAQ page. You'll find it there as well where I talk about grips and there's even a discount code available there. Uh, so getting fit, once you have the clubs, they're going to find the right lie angle for you based on your impact position. Now, one of the other common questions that I receive is, do I need different clubs? Do I need a different lie angle? And the answer is no if your clubs fit your current impact position. Um, let's say your impact position is here and you are setting up here, but that's your impact. Now all we're going to do is set up here and again we're going to make impact at the same angle. If you set up farther from the ball than before, which is doubtful with my concept, uh, if you did that you might need a little bit flatter. If you move closer you'll need a little bit more upright. So but they take that all into consideration. They're the best in the business. Um, they even have some discounts available now. If you do decide you're ready to get fit for clubs, Club Champion is the best. I'll put a link below uh, with more information. So now the solution to all of this and keeping things simple is simply learning to set up on your impact plane. And we know at impact, the wrists are gonna be in ulnar deviation like this. Uh, you could have a buddy pull the club towards you and you'd see it gets pulled there. It doesn't go there. So this should be very comfortable. And we just want to see if you were setting up previously here, we're just going to set up there. We're going to put the trailing hand on. So the trailing elbow is on the same plane as the golf club. And then we're going to bend forward uh, from the hips and, and get ourselves set up. And from there, all we're trying to do, we're going to work towards moving the club back on one single plane and through on that same plane that we're set up on. And the goal then is to work on moving the club ideally through impact. And so my system teaches you starting with short swings to do something like this, um, getting the hands leading through impact, which gives you five benefits. It keeps the club face square longer through impact. It moves the club on a flat spot through impact, which eliminates fat and thin shots. It has it moving straight on the target line. It also allows for centeredness of contact. If your hands are even with the ball, you're tending to hit it low on the face. If we move the hands forward, it moves up to the middle of the face. It also, with the hands leading, and to create the flat spot, we need this rotation. Uh, the grip is naturally moving up because we're rotating through the shot. That creates parametric acceleration without any more effort from you it equals more club head speed. You see my complete learning program at setupforimpact.com. Uh, it allows you to send in videos for my review uh, or just to have access to the learning program, whichever fits your style. I have schools coming up in Cincinnati, in Pennsylvania, North Carolina. Check it out on my website. Please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe here on YouTube. If you have any questions or comments, pop them in the box below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions uh, regarding any of this, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Mm -hmm.